it seems almost derogare that at some point somebody's going to stand up and say, it's been a long day. We got to make a vote. Well, I'm looking at the clock. It's quarter after nine. I just want to cut this down to some numbers for you. Pennsylvania, 320 miles east to west, 110 north to south. A little over 12.8 million Pennsylvanians, of which over half are concentrated within a 40 by 40 square in the Philadelphia and its collar areas. Many folks who oppose this bill will say it's mass transit and it's wasteful. Not a chance. And I used to be one of those guys. But I know that for us to ask for a million cars to descend upon Philadelphia would just cause a, a gridlock beyond description. In Philadelphia, mass transit works. People will point to Pittsburgh and say the Port Authority's failings are many, and I'd agree. And we're much smaller than Philadelphia. We're not six million people in those collar counties, we're about two. So do the math, and that many cars moving into Pittsburgh, which has more bridges per square mile than any other major city in the United States. For my friends from the West, that's our distinction. We live in a geographic formation called a glacially bisected plateau. What that means, I'll explain it to you later. What that means during the last great ice age when the glaciers came down and carved out the valleys and the rivers and the streams that we live amongst, it also left us with a need for many, many bridges. Now, I told somebody I'm not going to invoke Minneapolis. But I'll tell you, out of, 40, out of those 4,400 structurally deficient bridges we have them, over half of them used the same construction method called a box beam for the bridge that went down in Minneapolis. And I pray to God that doesn't happen anywhere in this Commonwealth. But a few years ago, it almost did happen to me. The Route 356, Donald C. Lobach, Congressional Medal of Honor winner bridge, scored a two out of 100. Got an interesting phone call from my dear friend, rest his soul, Bob Rabati, served as mayor of Freeport for 25 years, and Bob was as cool as a cucumber. He would call and he'd say, hey, Jeff, what do you think? Can we do this? But this was a different Bob Ravati. What are you doing? Wait, limit my bridge. Are you kidding me? I got 5,000 cars coming in on Freeport. What do you mean? They took a 100-ton, four-lane, heavy commercial bridge connecting four counties, and they dropped it down to one ton. Well, the mayor of Freeport, Bob, says, how am I going to move ambulances across that bridge? So I called PennDOT and said, you guys got to give them a waiver to move ambulances. Come on, man, public safety, use your head. No, absolutely not. We have just reason. And the next day, Rick Geist and I and, and Jimmy Swartz and Bob Ravati from Freeport crawled up underneath that bridge where Westmoreland County was literally wedging 24-inch tree stumps sliced into pieces between the concrete foundation and the metal superstructure. Now, I don't know where Rick Geist found $68 million to get that bridge fixed, but the people on the Westmoreland end are real happy that we can now move ambulances back across the bridge, because at one point, my father in his pickup truck legally could not use that bridge. Now, everybody will tell you that this is about rebuilding our bridges, which for those of us in the West is quite valuable. They'll tell you it's about roadways where our friends in the East who have to add capacity to their transportation structure just so they can handle more vehicles, they'll tell you it is about roads. But I think what's being overlooked in this bill is the intermodal part of that. Folks, this is groundbreaking stuff. This is allowing us to combine the modes of our transportation that happen to occupy the same space. And the one that comes in mind is Manesson. 
which has a river lock, train lines, highways, all available. It could serve as a major shipping port. Mr. Speaker, this state has five distinct landforms, ranging from the, out the Atlantic Plain for our friends in Delaware County, through the Piedmonts of Lancaster, through the Appalachian Plateau in the mid-state to where I live. We have 55 frosts a year. Now, as my friend, the gentlelady from Montgomery pointed out, it's been 15 years. Do the math, that's over 800 frost heaves on our highways that just blow them apart like a loose gravel road. For my friends in rural areas, please look at the funding for dirt and gravel road. This is a game changer. We are not on the outside of the store looking in anymore. Now our townships can go into those lesser used roads. The ones that everybody seems to use to connect between the giant paved places. Mr. Speaker, there is something in this bill that benefits every individual of the 203 legislative districts. I've heard a lot of wisdom here and I've tried to approach it with an open mind, but a few thoughts stick out. To categorically deny a vote on this bill because you object to a normal indexing of the inflationary rate versus the prevailing wage, which was last touched in 1961, and the chairman was correct. I wasn't a gleam in mum's eye for another couple of years to say, I like this, but this is a deal breaker. That's putting all your chips on one number, Mr. Speaker. That's not asking for half a loaf. That's asking for the whole thing or nothing at all. And I'm going to be honest with you, and I'll come back to it. I don't want to be the one that hosts that bridge that goes down, but mark my words, there will be a bridge go down. I don't know where it's going to be, but when it does, I'm reminded of Ben Franklin's old adage, surely we must hang together, or we will hang separately. The first bridge, whether it's in Fayette, or up in Carbon, or in Allegheny, or in Chester, we're all going to hang, and rightfully so. Mr. Speaker, I'd encourage a yes vote on Amendment 04465. Let's keep Pennsylvania moving. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.